Hi, I'm Melissa Pye, Program Manager for the UNSW Founders Flagship 10X Accelerator Program. It's with great pleasure that I'll be hosting tonight's event from the incredible Michael Crouch Innovation Centre, the heart and soul of UNSW Founders. As I stand here in this amazing incubation space, I'm reminded of the powerful belief held by the late Michael Crouch AO. Innovation is an attitude of mind. Don't accept the status quo. And how apt that is for the brilliant six teams who've just completed our 10 week intensive program, all committed to solving problems they've identified with innovative solutions. Tonight, we celebrate and showcase their extraordinary achievements. I'm super excited to welcome you to this digital event where you'll meet the teams, hear the pictures, and see the journey they've been on. Before proceeding further, I'd like to introduce Auntie Yvonne Sims. Auntie Yvonne is a Bidjigal Gweebel elder from the La Perouse Aboriginal community. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yvonne Sims. I am Wollongang tribe, Gweebel, Bidjigal, direct descendant of Cooman and Pemaway. I would like to thank the University of New South Wales this evening for inviting me to do this welcome and that you are all safe, well and keeping your spaces as usual um, with this pandemic. I am from La Perouse. Um, I was brought up on the Aboriginal mission at La Perouse and on behalf of my mum and my elders from the La Perouse uh, mission, I'd just like to say welcome. And the people uh, that I am welcoming to Bidjigal country, you are on different countries and I would like to acknowledge those countries and hope that those people and their apical ancestors are all safe and well and keeping um, their spaces as well and welcome to Vigical Country. Thank you and Yanu. Goodbye in direct language. Thank you, Auntie Yvonne, for your warm welcome to country for the UNSW Founders 10X Demo Night event. Launched in 2018, UNSW Founders 10X is our industry agnostic accelerator tailored for high potential startups founded by UNSW students, staff and alumni. The intensive program is designed to provide founders with the knowledge, skills and networks for them to attract customers, undertake pilots, form partnerships and raise money. After the 10 weeks, they then become 10X alumni and are supportive for a further six to 10 months. We've seen over 40 teams participate in the program since then, many of whom have gone on to achieve global success. This cohort is no different. I've been inspired by the curiosity, passion and sheer grit of all of the teams who've just completed the program, which was delivered 100% online. The cool thing about this is we've had participants from all over Australia, as well as India, China and Ireland. Tonight we will showcase the businesses they're building and the change they're seeking to make. So here's how tonight's going to work. First, we'll hear an opening address from Professor Elia Tambi Ambi Karaja, UNSW Deputy Vice Chancellor of Enterprise. We'll then introduce you to three of our teams who'll pitch their innovative startups before sharing with you a short overview of the journey they've been on. Our remaining three teams will then present and we'll close with a message from the Director of Entrepreneurship at UNSW, David Burt. We'll then invite everyone to network with the teams and ask any burning questions you might have. If you can't stay and would like to be connected with the teams, please complete your details in the form now dropped in the chat and we'll be delighted to pass on the information. Now, I'd like to invite Professor Ambi Karaja to say a few words. Thank you, Ambi. Welcome to the UNSW Founder 10X Accelerator Demo Night. Tonight, we are here to celebrate six startup founders who have just completed the 10X Accelerator program. UNSW is supporting these founders because we have a mission to be Australia's most entrepreneurial university. By offering support programs, UNSW students, staff and alumni can build the capability, mindset and networks required for their success. Cutting-edge startups require a critical mass of highly skilled people 
and the greatest concentration of skills is right here on our entrepreneurial campus. If you want rapid job creation in Australia to help rebuild the economy after the impact of COVID-19, we need to support the people who are stepping up to start and lead new companies. We are proud that UNSW can play a role in helping the next generation of Australian founders. Congratulations to the six startups who are pitching tonight. Thanks, Ambi. Before we meet the first three teams, I'd like to extend my enormous gratitude to the amazing 96 speakers, mentors, and other program supporters who shared their wisdom, experience, and time with our founders. Your generosity, passion and commitment to seeing the team succeed is greatly appreciated. So on behalf of me and the rest of the team, a massive thank you. So let's go. First up, we have Contactile, Bandicoot Imaging Sciences and PV Master. Stephen and I started working together about eight years ago uh, and we were on a project, a research project at UNSW where we were um, trying to understand um, how people sense friction. Um, and so that quickly evolved into how do we develop artificial tactile sensors that do the same thing as human skin and then into um, you know, starting contactile. When we started making the, the artificial tactile sensors, um, Ben was, was a student at the time and he joined our project first as an undergraduate honours thesis student and then as a master's thesis student and the three of us have been together ever since. Yeah, so Stephen had posted the uh, thesis project Robotic Thinker. I think that's about the level of detail that it went into and I went, okay, that seems interesting. So I sent the email and uh, that's kind of how we got started in my master's thesis and then I came on as a researcher and then basically last year when we seriously got into um, commercializing that's when it kind of got very real. Ben is kind of a master of all trades <laughs> um, so he is a prototyping savant <laughs> like just from mechanical to electrical to even software and I'm a software engineer so I can, I can say that <laughs> and what I think Stephen brings to the table is that um, that holistic view um, so Ben and I can get quite stuck into the, the details and the day-to-day -day of, of you know, doing startup stuff um, but Stephen always tries to bring us back to okay but how does this fit into the, the bigger picture and are we progressing towards our goals and milestones and, and making sure we stay on track that way. We were all there pretty much at the start, the inception of this idea where, you know, in research we were looking at what other people were doing and because, you know, we are coming out of a research institute, it was going to die a very slow <laughs> death if, it, if we didn't commercialise it. And that just felt like such a big shame to us, given you know the the simplicity yet sophistication of the technology that we've developed and the potential in applications that don't even exist yet. Hi, I'm Heba Kamas from Contactile. I've seen that in a number of industries, including the natural resources sector, agriculture and manufacturing, robotics are increasingly being used to improve worker safety and performance. But these robotics are limited in what they can do because they haven't been able to replicate the human sense of touch. At Contactile, we're giving robots a human sense of touch. Our tactile sensors are as sensitive as human skin and they're enabling robots to use their hands just like we do. But don't take my word for it. Here's our co-founder, Ben, to show you one of our products in action. Other grippers can only apply pre-programmed forces and can't change on the fly. Our sensors are autonomously detecting the optimal grip force for each of these objects in real time and the gripper is acting accordingly. You can see that even if the weight of the object changes, the sensors allow the gripper to respond dynamically, just like a human would. Our founding team aren't just pretty faces. We're the inventors of the tactile sensing technology. We've got more degrees than you can poke a stick at. 
and we're using all our smarts to bring about a tactile revolution in robotics. The current market for appendages that attach to a robot arm is growing to a massive $6 billion by 2025. But we're unlocking new applications for which robots have never been used in the past. So our total addressable market is even bigger than this. We'll sell our sensors directly to the thousands of researchers that are developing the next generation of robotic technologies. We've already sold our $6,500 development kit to a number of these early adopters, including to Queensland University of Technology, Rice University in the US, and Sigma Clermont and Ecole Centrale de Lyon in France. We'll also sell our sensors to the thousands of integrators that are developing bespoke automation solutions for their customers. We've had positive feedback from a number of these integrators, and in 2021, we'll be performing a product evaluation with an innovative integrator in Australia. Finally, we'll form channel partnerships with other robotics component manufacturers so that we can penetrate the global robotics value chain. We've had a product evaluation with a world-leading robot hand company, and Shadow Robot Company are already offering our sensors as an add-on to improve their product. This three-pronged approach gives us an enormous reach into almost every conceivable application in robotics, including in the natural resources sector, agriculture, warehouse and e-commerce fulfillment, advanced manufacturing, prosthetics, surgical robotics, and even space. We'd like to connect with anyone that wants to improve worker safety and performance and is interested in trialing our product. So please connect with us and join this tactile revolution in robotics at Contactile, giving robots a human sense of touch. We've all known each other for about 15 years because we worked together at Canon's research facility in North Ryde. Now Canon chose to actually close that facility down about 18 months ago, so we saw it as a really good opportunity to basically keep ourselves together as a team and create some technology of our own. We've been making some exciting technology for Canon for a while, but they brought up this idea that we could go out and do something on our own. It was just, I was just so excited because I've been thinking a similar thing. And the really cool thing that Dave was able to do was actually sort of bring the band back together. We actually got a bunch of us who'd worked together before and creating our own company. So fantastic. Bringing the team together was, was almost a bit of a no-brainer because uh, everyone was just so good at what they did and we'd already been sort of clicking together and, and working as a team um, in projects within Canon. It went from talking to Dave and thinking, yeah, that, yeah we could, you know, that we'd work really well together and um, we, could, we could do something on our own, to bringing Peter in, it's like, yeah, that's going to be the technical heart of the company. And then the missing piece of the puzzle was DK, who could actually implement all the nitty gritty stuff we needed to actually make this really work and scale up. When, when DK came on board, it was like, yes, I can actually see this. Yeah, our skills are complementary. We were all quite tech heavy, but um, you know, even, even, even the CEO codes from time to time, all of us have quite deep and quite broad knowledge areas and they do overlap but they also let us work together really well because we've got that common ground where we can really understand each other plus our own specialties where we can dive deeper and, and, and uh, get those results. For me the thing that keeps the team going together is actually the team itself. I genuinely enjoy working um, with Matthew, Peter and David. They are just so good at what they do and every day they basically give me faith that we will be that billion dollar company that we aspire to be. Hello, I'm Dave from Bandicoot. Now, we all know that online shopping can be a bit hit and miss sometimes. You want to buy that t-shirt, but you hesitate because you're wondering, eh, what's it going to actually look like when it arrives in the mail? Well, imagine that with a single click on that t-shirt, you saw this. Or even better, that wallet you were thinking of buying. What if you could just tilt your phone backwards and forwards a few times and it was as if you were holding it in your hand? What you're seeing here is Bandicoot's Shimmer View, a product that we developed to help people better experience materials and fabrics online. And why? Well, the sad fact is that one in three products that are bought online are returned. And of those, 25% of them because they just didn't look right when they arrived in the mail. And that's bad. 
That's bad for you as a consumer because it wastes your time having to send it back. And it's bad for the online retailer because it costs them money. So we started with what every online retailer already has, a camera and a flash. And then we developed some really cool image alignment technology that gives them some pixel accuracies required in order to power shimmer view. And then most importantly, we put it all together so that all an online retailer needs to do is pick up a camera, shoot a few shots of their fabric, upload it to our servers, and then a few minutes later they get the results back. It's on their website the same day. Easy. Now, it's fair to ask, why isn't everyone doing this? Well, have a look at the equipment you need. It's big, it's heavy, it's expensive, and in fact, quite often you've actually got to send your material off somewhere to a company to have it done for you. With Bandicoot scans, it's done in-house and anyone can do it. And you know what? We've got a pretty simple business model too. You know, try it out, kick the tyres, see if it's for you. And then there's a basic per scan cost after that, and then there's add-ons. And if you want to do lots of scans, hey, there's a subscription model, and we'll give you priority service and all sorts of other things. Now, we're actually going to target 20,000 shimmers a month by the end of 2022. And these are the collaborators that we're working with right now to validate the product and find out more about what we can do to help. And they're both global and local. And here's the team. We've known each other for 15 years. You've got Matt here who has a deep technological knowledge of just about anything. And it's Peter's experience in image alignment that's actually making all this possible. And then DK's ability to take those solutions and put them all together and make it work is just fantastic. And what are we looking for? Well, we'd love any advice you got. And we're also looking for warm introductions into the fashion and textiles industries. And yes, in a few months time, we're gonna start fundraising. So Bandicoot, bringing a new way of experiencing materials online. I met Dr. Zhu in UNSW when I did my PhD. He was actually my co-supervisor at, at that time. He's particularly interested in op optics for photovoltaic solar. So am I. And we were both fascinated about the ideas. And when the more and more we do research, we find we probably could make use of what we discovered. When I did my PhD, I always used my technology for the upper stream for the manufacturers, uh, like how to help them to model their PV module and how to optimize and the manufacturing process. But after I graduate, I, 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 I think I find another opportunity, which is the downstream, more application part of the solar panels. So I start the company PV Master and um, Luckily, uh, doctors also have an interest in startup, so we start this together. We understood there there was a big challenge for us for the very accurate uh, power generation forecasting. Then we decided to do the business. So we have been working together for almost ten years, and we decided to commercialize our stuff um, since five years, twenty fifteen. Yeah why we can't have more solar farms in Australia and in some of other countries is we don't have a green infrastructure built for first is it's variable power output and then it's distributed so that's why uh, it's um, like it brings me to my research like maybe my research can help in this particular problem this particular challenge like how to help solar integrate it into the grid. Hi, I'm Yang, co-founder of PV Master. This is me with my co-founder, Dr. Zi. We both have PhDs in solar energy from UNSW, the leading renewable energy research university in the world. Dr. Zi and I are on a mission to source 100% of world's energy from renewables. To achieve this goal, we worked together for many years to improve efficiency and reduce the cost of solar panels. On our journey, we discovered an even bigger problem. The problem is unreliable forecasting of solar farm power output. 
Let me explain why this is a problem. When clouds move between the sun and the solar farm, its power output can rapidly drop. When those clouds move away, its power just spikes right back up again. Because the energy grid relies on a predictable amount of electricity to run your fridge, TV, and office equipment, the power variability of solar farm causes problem. When a solar farm predicts it can deliver 100 megawatt, but only deliver 50, the grid has to buy more power from a non-renewable energy source, which costs more money and contributes to pollution. The grid then passes this extra cost on to solar farms as a fine, which reduces their revenue and slows down their growth. We are here talking about up to $30 million for Australian solar farm per year and up to $6 billion per year globally. To reduce these funds and accelerate the growth of solar farms, PV Master have developed a better forecasting solution for solar farms. Leveraging over five years of research, we have invented a new forecasting engine, which uses AI to better understand satellite images and solar power output. Our research shows that PV Master forecasting engine is over 25% more accurate. It can be used to all kinds of solar panels and require less training data. Because it is computational faster and efficient, the operation and implement is also cheaper. We already have several paying customers who use PV Master data in their solar farm monitoring and also battery management. So during this 10x program, we have begun on trial our data with a major solar farm developer in Australia who has a pipeline of hundreds of megawatts of solar farms, as well as 10x program and Cyrus ARM program. We were also finalists in Amazon's machine learning competition 2020. Using our competitive advantage in processing energy data, we will first focus on the forecasting market and then expand our market to battery management electricity trading, and solar farm asset management. We are PV Master, keen to meet business partners and also investors. Come to chat to us if you want to accelerate 100% renewable together. Thank you. Thank you to the first three teams. Love your work. Before we continue to the final three teams, we wanted to share with you a short glimpse of the team's 10-week 10x journey. We've had an incredible diversity in the types of startups that we've got. Everything from drone technology to giving robots a human sense of touch to actually educating school age kids with the skills of the future. And we provide them with opportunities to connect in and understand everything from raising money to grants, to branding, to storytelling. So the whole gamut of skills that they actually need to be able to develop a startup and actually grow and scale that startup. So the framework I want to take you through is uh, something that is called Victim, Player, Noah, Learner. The problem with B2B is like, you work so hard to just get the meeting, so hard, and then you get the meeting and you're so excited um, and you go in and you start pitching and you forget to ask what their problem is. So what I'm going to try and do today is to using a term sheet because I think it's a really good tool to talk through the process of raising capital. It's actually been really great to have a purpose and to have a structure. We meet on Mondays to discuss metrics. Wednesdays we get in guest speakers. We have EAR sessions on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and we have additional bonus sessions on a Friday as well. I think the thing that you've, we've really gotten out of this program that we haven't had before is that interaction with other founders. It was a year ago that we first pitched Giveable. And back then, it was really just a concept. Fast forward one year and we now have the team, we have the tech, and we now have some wonderful early partners to help us grow and scale the platform. So well done. I know it's a really tough journey, but it's definitely worth it. I'm absolutely mind blown by the amount of support that we get from the startup ecosystem and community. They're so willing to give back and share um, what's worked, what hasn't, the good, the bad and the ugly. 
what 10X is trying to achieve, which is getting, you know, great ideas from uh, university researchers, students, and also alums, and get those into the world. So you always get a really interesting mix of founders. We've always been very technically focused. So what we like to try and sell is the fact that we've made this great technical product. Um, but one of the mentors was actually chatting to us and they said, boys, you've got to talk about the value proposition. I mean, what are you actually doing? What we've done now, I think, has got a much better sense of actually selling to a customer what value they're actually going to get out of it. We're going to, we're going to save their money. The biggest piece of advice I got out of it was just trying to solve simple problems simply. The, the most useful part of the founders program for Contactile has been the many introductions and conversations that have come from those introductions with be it mentors or advisors or um, potential customers or other startups or just anyone and everyone in, in the space that, that we're working in. The, the most rewarding thing about being an entrepreneur in residence is seeing how the teams gain confidence they explore new realms, they, they develop their ideas together with you, and each week you can really feel the progress they're making. They say it takes a village to raise a child, and it's no different for a startup. This program would not be possible without the support from so many people. And I'd especially like to thank our generous donors, Mr. Maha Sinatambi and Dr. Wong Fong Fui, who've made the UNSW Founders 10X Accelerator a reality. So now let's see the final three pictures from Block 42, Amphora Data and Aerologix. So I met the team via startup ecosystem and uh, we share very similar passion about bringing excitement and fun uh, product to the young kids. Brian, he used to work on Happy Feet 2 movie with Animal Logic and also worked at um, SBS. So he is a super creative person. Having the chance to work on Block 42 and uh, creating a software like this was uh, also kind of a dream come true for me to continuing working in the filming and education industry. I started to change my career due to the fact that I want to help more kids and help them enjoy, uh, entertain while learning. I met Richard at UNSW through our uh, bachelor degree together on a computer science degree. Before working on Buffalo 2, I work on web development and also game development. But at that time, uh, Brian came up with the idea um, of Bob 42, which is um, like easy 3D animation uh, that can be used by kids or other uh, people, um, it, which is fun and also uh, helping other people to um, know more about 3D. I'm really happy and really excited to, uh, about this idea. And I think uh, Bob 42 should be uh, one I should be doing uh, in the my, in my rest of my life. The world is moving into a more technological era and where kids are now needing these skills in all parts of the workplace, whether it be in like medicine or any really any field at all. So being able to train computer literacy as well as different problem solving skills and different ways of thinking is really important. My passion has always been in education and multimedia industry because it's so fun. I never miss out on any um, Disney animation when I was little. Uh, but when it comes to, you know, career choice, Asian parents, my mom always wanted me to be either in finance or um, doctor, etc. Uh, after, you know, two or three years working in bank and fund management, I decided to really do something that I'm passionate about. So this is why I stepped out and come into the startup world. And I find it really exciting uh, working with, with, with team. Uh, learning every day uh, is, is, such a, is such a big challenge, but uh, it's great fun. Have you noticed the massive digital transformation happening in government departments, at construction sites, in big corporates, banks and the media? 
and COVID has definitely accelerated digital uptake. The question is, what are the skills required for future jobs? Is it teamwork, problem solving, digital literacy, creativity, design thinking? And is our young generation being adequately prepared for future jobs? I'm Charlene, CEO and co-founder of Block42, a platform that provides super easy, fun and engaging way for kids from 10 to 17 years old to develop skills for the future. Kids simply download Block42 and within 15 minutes, they're already designing and creating 3D buildings, smart cities, and space journeys with their classmates. They can share their creation with the whole world and even 3D print it. Beauty of our platform is kids can collaborate on the same project in real time. Block42 is a SaaS model with three levels of subscriptions, free for limited features forever, $20 per user per month for full features and online tutorials, and a package for school. In this package, teachers have access to our NASA accredited professional training and student workshops run by our professional animators. Teachers are loving Block 42, and here's what they're saying about us. I think uh, it, it actually blends a whole lot of learning for them. So it's a whole lot of maths and a whole lot of science, but it's also the excitement of designing something and seeing it come to life. Uh, and I know I saw them come back into the classroom and their faces were just aglow. They were very excited about what's to come. We launched Block 42 in June last year and currently have 10 schools in Australia and Singapore subscribing the school package. From next year, our growth strategy is to collaborate with influencers and distribution channels to grow the user base and revenue by 10 times. By 2024, there will be 100 million active users making their creations and trading their 3D digital assets via the Block42 platform. We are a team of XVC, game developers and Animal Logic professional artists. We also have amazing advisors with a wealth of experience in the education and multimedia industries. If you are a parent, teacher, or just passionate about equipping our younger generation with the skills of the future, please come to chat to us after the presentation. Isaac and I, we met when we were both at the University of New South Wales. We actually lived in the same giant share house together on Maroubra Beach and we used to build a lot of crazy projects there actually. It was a really good time. So Ryan and I initially spoke about the idea of Amphora at the pub and over a couple of months we were sort of having sort of some high level chats and it wasn't until I got a message from our mutual friend saying Ryan's resigned that I knew it was on for real and <laughs> I'd better do the same. And uh, jump in fully. I've spent the last many years working in technology, working on the coalface of implementing advanced technology in small and large companies. Um, but I think it, at that same time, Isaac's been doing a similar thing from uh, an executive and, and management perspective. I can do lots of fun stuff with data science and AI, but I couldn't code to build an app to save my life. Um, so Ryan knows how to build software products from start to finish and that's really brought a um, uh, next level of uh, capability and delivery to our software. One of the great things about working with Isaac is that sometimes I think I've got a really smart idea and I'll mention it to him and he'll frame it in, in a formal way because you know he's got a PhD in complex systems and that actually makes me feel quite smart as well. I feel like we can keep up even though I don't have a PhD. Hi, I'm Isaac from Amphora Data. Today I'm excited to launch 4.2, our latest product, changing the future of customer retention. Subscription companies have transformed every aspect of our lives. The way we eat, the way we have fun, the way we work, and how we look after ourselves. These companies' greatest strength is happy, loyal, and repeat customers. But their biggest risk is churn. They live and die on whether they can keep their customers happy, satisfied and subscribed. 
So the question is, how can they increase retention? Meet Emily. She is responsible for customers and growth at her company. She has a problem with churn and she needs to fix it fast. She calls up her advisors for help, but half are unavailable and the others don't tell her anything new. She asks the data science team, but it's going to take too long to get an answer and she always struggles to understand what they're talking about too. Her company has great technology with lots of charts and graphs, but they don't provide her the actionable insights that a lay person like Emily can use. What she needs is a powerful tool that provides simple advice on improving retention. This is where 4.2 comes in. 4.2 is an application that helps you change the future. Emily's next advisor is available 24 seven, gives plain English insights, and is in sync with her customers. There are thousands of Emily's around the world and we can help them all improve retention with 4.2. Using 4.2 is easy. You simply ask a question and get an answer in plain English. But don't let this fool you. Under the hood, we use technology that's the envy of the largest companies in the world. We're piloting with an Australian loyalty company. They need to improve retention in their loyalty program. They're using 4.2 because of our powerful insight combined with simple interface. They're also confident in our team to deliver. I'm a prediction expert with a PhD in maths. I've previously worked in McKinsey and helped giants transform the analytics engines. Ryan, my co-founder, is an engineering guru. He's previously worked at Microsoft, helping to operationalize AI at large and small businesses. There are strong products out there, but none are capable of improving retention for our customers. Other options are either too expensive, too basic, or just hard to integrate. It's easy to get started with 4.2. We offer both a fixed term pilot as well as a deployed solution. We're currently validating our product locally with direct sales to B2C subscription companies. Next year, we'll raise a seed round, automate 4.2, and establish channel partners. Beyond that, we scale globally. Do you want happier customers and improved retention? Reach out, we've got seven spots left in our pilot program. Do you want a back AI that delivers real business value? Let's have a chat, we're doing a seed round next year. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to chatting with you further in our booth later this evening. Rakesh and I have both met doing the MBA at University of New South Wales. I was actually um, doing the MBA at the time I got invited in as an industry expert to talk about drone technology and Rakesh was doing a presentation on drone technology. So we, um, you know, we had a common bond there. We got, uh, we got chatting after the class and I'd been working in drone tech and aviation for years and Rakesh had a previous drone tech startup. Um, so that's, that's where we met and then um, you know, we started formulating ideas for Aerologics. We were over in, in Bangalore in India last year and there's constant blackouts and power. So we're, you know, we're powering through trying to get all this work done. It's eight o'clock and there's a big storm and the whole city goes out, there's no power. So we're still trying to work away and get our work done, but it was just like, hey, this is this is the Aerologics HQ, welcome to start up land. And, and for me, that was a, you know, it was an eye opener. India is an interesting place. Here we are cooking dinner in the Aerologics house again. <laughs> Uh, another night, another blackout. Very good, we've got the burner light. We've got a phone up there providing some light and another phone down here. Um, yeah, here we are. <laughs> living, living the dream. Our mission is to become the biggest drone tech company in the world and build the biggest um, pilot network, enabling our pilots through innovative digital technology. We also want to give something back to the community. Um, and in that, that includes employing a lot of drone pilots, drone hobbies. We want to give back um, our previous experience, as well as one thing I want to really bring here is that, you know, our great uh, solid team, wherein everybody is highly uh, invested, uh, everything. Um, and that's, that's why Aerologics will uh, succeed. Hi, I'm Tom Kasker, co-founder of Aerologics. 
A few years ago, I was working as a Qantas pilot, living the dream in sunny Cairns. When I wasn't out flying planes, I was kite surfing. On one of these epic sessions, I had an accident that changed my life forever. I broke my neck, falling from over 15 metres, straight onto my head, completely fracturing my C7 vertebrae. As a result of this accident, I lost my medical to fly for Qantas. So I did the next best thing, I started flying drones. I set up a drone business doing aerial photography and R&D projects and I also went back and studied an MBA at the University of New South Wales. This is where I met my co-founder Rakesh and that's where Aerologix began. Maintaining large portfolios of infrastructure is an enormous problem for telcos and utilities. While they have been turning to drones to perform some inspections, the cost of a fully qualified drone pilot and their expensive drone is often too expensive to scale and use as a viable solution. Companies have also been trying to set up their own in-house drone operation. However, the sheer scale and volume required does not make sense due to the time, money and resources involved. We have created a platform to utilise the increasing talent pool of drone pilots. There are currently over 18,000 licensed drone pilots and over 1 million people who own drones in Australia. We've built both an iOS and Android app and a full flight navigation feature called Aeropath to completely automate the most challenging 3D mapping procedures. This means even novice drone pilots with their consumer drones can do complex missions. They simply accept a mission, turn up to site, turn on their drone and then watch the drone capture the images. Our software then turns this data into highly valuable 3D or CAD engineering models, giving stakeholders valuable insights about their assets. This saves an enormous amount of time, money and resources. We have a team that is second to none, with nine software engineers and five operational personnel, many with unique skill sets in drone tech, aviation, computer science and engineering. And we don't think small. Our first client is one of the largest telco companies in the world and we've signed a multi-year, multi-million dollar deal to 3D model thousands of their telco assets. We've commenced servicing this contract here in Sydney and we'll rapidly scale and expand nationally using our drone pilot network and software. We've built the entire ecosystem. You can jump on our platform, purchase a drone, get insurance, book a training course and go flying. COVID-19 has accelerated the rollout plans of the 5G upgrades, which has supercharged our solution. We are very well placed to rapidly scale and we've just closed our pre-seed round of 1.2 million. We are now focused on scaling our business throughout Australia in preparation for global expansion. We are looking ahead for interest in our next round and strategic partners. So if life turns things on its head for you, look up to the clouds and you'll see a silver lining, along with Aerologic's empowered trains. So now you've met the extraordinary six teams who participated in the 2020 10X Accelerator program. Before I invite you to meet the teams, David Burt, Director of Entrepreneurship at UNSW, will make a few closing remarks. Good evening, everyone. I'm David Burt, the Director of Entrepreneurship at UNSW. The founders you've seen tonight have given you a sneak peek into the future that they're building. As you reflect on what you've seen tonight, I invite you to consider how many of these founders can you help? Do you have an insight about their industry that you can share with them? Do you know someone who might be their customer or investor? Maybe you just have a message of encouragement to share with them. If you can help one of these founders, please stay on and meet them tonight. And if you can't stay on for the networking, please reach out and contact the founders after the event. They need your support. UNSW and our philanthropic partners are making a huge investment to support the next generation of founders. What you've seen here tonight is an example of the hundreds of founders that UNSW is supporting through our programs. I joined UNSW in March of this year, just as COVID-19 was starting to shut down our way of life. I joined because the university is the best place to support early stage founders. It's an awesome mix of people, from those just starting out in life with an abundance of energy and optimism, to those coming towards the end of their career who have a deep knowledge and wisdom to share and give back. 
the most powerful asset of a university is its community. And it's that community who stepped up to help the founders in the 10X Accelerator program. So the last thing from me, just before I open up the networking, is to thank all of the people who helped these founders through the 10X Accelerator. I especially want to thank the mentors and speakers that have volunteered their time over the past 10 weeks to help these founders make progress. Without you, this program would not be possible. Thank you so much. And finally, thank you to all of you for being here with us tonight. Please join me, come and meet the founders in the Networking Expo, meet the teams and help them. Thanks, David. And that brings us to the end of the formal aspect of tonight's event. I'd now like to invite you to meet the teams. Each will be hosting a virtual room in the expo area. And if you have to run, but would still like to connect with one of the teams, please just leave your details on the form in the chat. See you in the expo area and thank you so much for coming.